What's up, my friends? Ben here, coming at you with some piping hot raw tea that's sure to burn Megan's mouth. Grab your Union Jack napkins and get ready because this one's a doozy. You all know I'd live for the juicy goss, but this saga takes the scone. Our old pals Harry and Megan, the raw rejects turned hustlers, are having a tough go of it lately. Their big money podcast deal with Spotify, which landed after abandoning the palace for sunny California, has gone, well, not great. But before we delve into any further detail, if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, press the notification bell. We don't want you guys to miss out on any more royal analysis. So now, an $18 million payday for Megan to simply open her trap and yap away must be nice. But it seems the former cable actress couldn't quite live up to her end of the bargain. Bill Simmons, a top exec, it was calling them Z-listed grifters after they delivered only 12 episodes. Ouch. Those are some choice words for the one small duo. But can you blame the guy? Megan and Harry sold Spotify a dream of Duchess dishing candid tales of the struggles as a Saudi princess trapped in Buckingham Palace. A chance to unpack the heavy psychological baggage of having servants attend to your every whim. Instead, they got some lukewarm ramblings about ambitious millennial women. That felt more preachy than juicy. Now, I'm not sure who greenlit this vanity project, but my thoughts are with them during these troubled times. Maybe don't stake your company's future on a dealy celeb next time. While we're dishing on Harry and Meg's spectacular fourth on Grace, let's pause to savour the delicious irony that good old Prince Andrew's daughter, Prince Beatrice seems to be enjoying a much better reception and wait for it on Spotify too. That's right. Even as Megan's podcast belly flops, Beatrice has been welcomed with open arms by the company to host discussions on tech and innovation. The charismatic princess with prestigious royal pedigree, Harry and Megan Jettison, is treating Spotify with respect and delivering value rather than putting on airs. You know, this success has to sting for the Duchess, who fancies herself as an avant-garde and cutting edge, yet here's the real blue-blooded role from the firm. She loves villainizing, showing her up on her playing field. You can't picture Megan just stewing on $40 million monthly to estate, surrounded by rescue chinchillas and noisy commercial juicers. Her beady eyes narrowing as she watches Beatrice engage with Spotify brass without a trace of self-importance. No megawatt smiles or exaggerated concern for society's downtrodden for the cameras. Just poised substance and the ability to, you know, do the job she's paid for. The steam has to be absolutely pouring from Megan's ears, knowing that while her monstrosly overhyped podcast flops, the demure daughter of skeezy Prince Andrew is eating her lunch all without yapping endlessly about her voice being surpassed as Megan so loves insisting while her nails dig into the limelight. I can only imagine the poisonous jealousy coursing through Megan's veins as Beatrice effortlessly outshines her. For years, Megan has tried fruitlessly to convince the world she's this generation's Angelina Jolie, a profound humanitarian bound for the highest echelons of celeb activism, hamstrung only by the stuffy, outdated traditions of the firm. But Beatrice's reception puts the lie to the delusion once and for all. It's not a crusty old world tradition holding Megan back from greater success. It's her own hunger for attention, while B takes a lesson, less is more approach and lets her natural warmth and real relatability speak for itself. Megan is constantly rubbing folks' noses in her legitimacy. So what do you think will happen next in the Sussex saga, guys? Only time will tell. But until next time, we'll see you again for more raw news and analysis. Bye for now.